Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Richard Beaumont. I've been in human design for 25 years and 20 of those have been training professional analysts. So today we're going to be having a look at a, at a, a topic that really that I really love. It's a topic of the aura of plants and it's looking at the design of plants. And when we think about a human being, we think about the nine centers, the nine possible squares and triangles that can be filled in and that is the matrix of the human being but plants have a different matrix here you can see the form of plants it's a more limited matrix but it tells us about what the plants can do for us at the same time plants are very different in a mechanical way um, Human beings are, are vertical creatures. You know, we get our neutrino feed from above. Plants are the opposite. They get the neutrino feed from below. So what does that mean? Well, in human design, we are used to talking about the aura. We're used to seeing that the aura is seven and a half feet around us, you know, in all areas, behind and to the sides and above and, and below. So we're used to saying, OK, when you when you're being conditioned by someone else, if they have a center that is colored in and you don't and you have auric contact, then you're going to be influenced by them. Your openness is going to receive what they're putting out through their aura. But it's not the same thing for plants. And this is one of these fascinating uh, revelations that Ra gave to us. The plant's aura is very close to its form. And if you look at the uh, look at the design of the plant, you'll see that the fifth gate in the uh, in the sacral is open. It's got the, the the 15 is there. The gate of extremes is there. But the fifth gate isn't. And the plant needs something from the outside to fix its rhythm. And we do that by touching it. When you touch a plant, it affects you and you affect it. And there is this wonderful sentient uh, consciousness that comes from the plant. I mean, the plants are alive. They're not, you know, they're not a dead thing. They're alive. They have their, their own consciousness. And they can help us and we can help them. Um, in fact, it's one of those wonderful things when you're when you're looking after a plant, there is a kind of a relationship that sets up between you. If you look at the form of plants, there is only one fear in the in the fear of the future. You know, the plant's main fear is, am I going to live the next moment? You know, am I going to continue to live? So if you can imagine someone with a with an open uh, splenic system and they're holding they're touching the plant that has the 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 ability to take away the fear of the future there's a there's a well-being there's a healing that happens so we have our healing plants we have our plants that bring in perfected form in the 5710 you know there's, there's the plants can help us feel better and in return, we water and we feed them. And there is this connection. You know, if you don't water your plants, well, I can anyway. You can feel there's, you know, there's, there's a certain not rightness in the environment. If you look after them, they'll look after you. So I love that. I love the fact that we can connect to the natural world and how important that is to us and to the plant. I mean, it's not just us. Of course, the bees will also fix the... Uh, that will also fix the plant, the mammals going by. There is always something from the outside coming in, the insects, etc. So what else can we see? We can see that the channel of exploration is there. So this is the gate of behavior in the 10th gate. This is, this is telling us that plants can change our behavior. We know they can change our behavior. You know, you can say you can take psychotropic plants. You can take plants that will speed you up. Plants that will sedate you and slow you down, they affect our behavior. And there are behavioral plants, that all, which a lot of people know about. 
it's out there, it's being used in medicine, it's being used in the world all over the place. Think about the healing process. When you're taking the right kind of plants, you will be centered in on yourself. You will be more aware of the moment. The 57th gate is the clarity of the intuition. And it's to do with the right ear. So it actually, when you're healing, when you're going through a healing process and you're working with plants, your hearing gets better. Your awareness of what's wrong with you gets better. There is a consciousness shift and awareness that comes to you through dealing with the right kind of plants. So we have healing plants and we have plants that change our behavior. But we've also got the sacral there and the sacral in the plant in the plant matrix is the most powerful of all gates this is the 34th gate so this is this also power plants that can come in plants can give us power providing we look after them you know there is this ongoing connection with human beings and with plants and it's just a beautiful thing to see the information about all this is going to be in the descriptions below. There's a, there's a very um, uh, reasonably priced audio where Ra goes into all the different details. And it's fascinating to see. However, what's even more interesting to think about is that just as we have a human matrix and yet each one of us is unique, the same is true of plants. And this is something that really needs experimentation. But it's very interesting to consider that when we talk about a human being being born, we talk about the moment of birth being when, if, it, if the baby is coming out feet first, the moment the head leaves the mother, or the other way around, the moment the feet leave the mother. So it's that moment of separation. In plants, it is the point at which they germinate and they come above the earth. That is the moment that that plant is born, if you like. It will carry the, the imprint because of the timing in which it's born. So what does that mean? That means that the neutrino feed that is around at that time will be, provide, will be in a particular gate. Think about it. There is a plant that comes up in a gate that you don't have, perhaps that joins your splits, or, or perhaps that will help you calm down, or perhaps which will give you energy. You know, if you, if, I mean, again, you'd have to go into human design and track it. You'd have to have a, a way of probably time-lapse film uh, to, to clock the exact moment of germination. But it's a whole area of research that I, I really would like to see carrying on. In fact, I might get involved myself with it when I've got time, which isn't at the moment. The important point to remember in terms of the point of germination is going to be where the moon is at that moment. So we're tracking the moon. Uh, it's something that's well known in biodynamic farming and the incredible uh, food and the incredible wine that uh, biodynamics brings us. I mean, it's a huge difference. It's a, it's a massive difference. To the food that we eat and uh, the wine we drink if it's biodynamic and they work with the moon and they work with various other things it would be lovely to see more of a development in that way in the world because we'd be nourishing ourselves so much better we'd be more in tune with nature and that is indeed where i have my greatest hope for the future of humanity there's a there's a huge movement towards greater technology and the uh, combination of biology and technology and that's one way that you can look at the future but i i prefer coming back to nature i prefer staying within the natural world because this is this is how we've always been this is what what brings us good health this is what brings us a sense of satisfaction and enjoyment in the world when you're around other sentient life forms and you're in harmony with them. And this is, this is the way to go, I'm sure of it. So hopefully this information is going to get out there. Uh, do get the, uh, the audio. I think it's about 24 pounds or something. It's not very much. And it's a very, it's a detailed um, description of what I'm saying from Ra himself. 
And he didn't talk much on this, so um, there isn't much information out there. It needs experimentation. It needs research. Um, and I would love to see that happen. But I wanted to share that with you, that there is this form of plants and they can come and connect with us in a sentient way or we can connect with them in a sentient way the information that you don't have to kill the plant you can touch the plant you can have a living ally with you throughout your life if you know what that plant is doing to you and you will feel better because of it so i want you to consider that i want you to consider the research i want you to consider the possibilities. I want you to get excited about it. And I want you to look after your plants because they will look after you. So it's just a wonderful thing to share. And uh, I wanted to say this at some point, I'm going to be talking more about this and other things later on. But um, that's my introduction to the aura of plants. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please like and uh, share and subscribe. Okay, thank you. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.